Chapter 31. I encompass worlds and volumes of worlds. The next day dawned a blessedly overcast one, although there was a hint of rain on the horizon. House's father had iced, massaged, and taped House's arm the night before. Doc McRae had iced, massaged, and taped it three times by 4 o'clock p.m. when the game time arrived. He had also fashioned a protective sleeve for House's left arm from an inner tube that Leonard Jackson had in his shed. You wear this whenever you're not pitching, he said. And now the people came. Picnics were spread all around the edges of the ball field. Umbrellas dotted the picnic area. As if on cue, the sun spilled out from behind a bank of red-rimmed clouds and danced on the tops of the umbrellas. Dr. Dan waited from picnic basket to picnic basket, from Aurora All-Star Blanket to Raleigh Redbug Blanket, his full plate of good food growing ever higher. At 4 o'clock p.m. sharp, Dr. Dan started them off by introducing every ball player from both teams and every pageant player as well. And now, he intoned, he didn't need a microphone. His golden voice carried over the entire field. And now, we will begin with our country's song. Please welcome Aurora County's newest tapping sensation, Honey Jackson. Honey clicked purposefully onto the stage wearing a beautiful red pair of tap shoes, size 2, and a sparkling red, white, and blue tutu. She carried a basket. While everyone watched her, she arranged her stuffed animal audience children at the back end of the stage, leaned down, and whispered to them, Now, be on your best behavior. Your chicken sisters are at home, just waiting to be born. But your new doggy sister is here and she's going to dance with Mama. And you have front row seats. She turned to face the crowd and summoned her partner. You, doggy! Eudora Weltley's red, white, and blue painted toenails tapped up the stairs and onto the stage. She wore a matching sparkly tutu. The Harmony Cornet Band, all twelve members, stood alongside the stage and played the Star Spangled Banner. While Finesse, dressed entirely in sequenced red and holding a wireless microphone in her manicured fingers, stood on the pitcher's mound and sang. She's good, said Dot Land, a look of surprise on her face. My baby, said Gladys Schultz, her hands clasped beneath her chin. Honey tapped her heart out to the national anthem. She leaned her little body forward and waved her arms in big circles. She tapped to the left, she tapped to the right. She tapped to the front, she tapped to the back. She made a furious clangor while Eudora sat at perfect attention on the corner of the stage, panting throughout the entire dance. Folks all over the field stood at attention next to their picnics and placed right hands over hearts. Or land of the free, sang Finesse, her voice breaking just a bit, and the home of the brave. To thunderous applause, Finesse bowed, and Honey bowed, and Yodora barked, barked for the first time ever. Honey hugged Yodora fiercely and shouted, thank you very much, to her fans, bowed three more times, collected and kissed her audience children, and exited the stage. A bright tapping star, she rushed into Leonard Jackson's waiting arms. I did it, Daddy. You sure did, said her father. Eudora barked again, and Leonard Jackson rubbed her back vigorously, and so did Eudora. Finesse radiated happiness from her perch on the pitcher's mound. Mia May, she said in her best French. I hope, Jespierre, you will love our performance as much as we loved preparing it for you. Loved might have been too strong of a word, or maybe it was just the right one. House approached the mound, and Finesse winked at him as she passed him on her way to the Methodist Church green room. House gave her a confused look and swiveled his head to follow her. Ruby pulled her catcher's mask across her face and got down in her crouch behind home plate. Dish it over, House! House ground his heel into the mound and flexed the fingers on his left hand. In and out, in and out. Not too bad. He took the baseball out of the glove, 
rolled it around in his fist with one hand and found the stitches. Ruby wiggled two fingers, signaled a slow curve, and Half nodded in agreement. He adjusted his grip, towed the mound, wound up, and delivered. The muscle stretched. He could hear it sing. He reminded himself that Sandy's elbow was black. His wasn't. He could take it easy. He could get it over the plate, and Ruby could catch it. Play ball, bellowed Dr. Dan. He clicked on his empire vest. Cheers ran all the way by the flagpole by Hallelujah School. Kids took their positions. The red bugs were up first. Klebo swaggered at shortstop. Just call me Pee-wee. Wilkie caught well at first base. Melba Jane started off as first base foul judge. She held an open parasol with both hands using it as a shield whenever the ball was hit. Finesse, who had been memorizing baseball lingo as if it were a script, was a star. She reported the play-by-play, -play, barking it into her real working microphone. She wore a red baseball cap during each inning's play. She liked her role so much, she pulled Melba off the first base line after the first inning and put her in charge of the pageant. The pageant is practically running itself now, she said. The order of events is on the clipboard. Everyone knows what to do. I have been called to another shore as an explorer, as a teammate, and you are being summoned to fill the Great One's shoes. The Great One? Moi, said Finesse. Melba, happy to be away from the ball game, wrinkled her nose at the pages of the clipboard, pages filled with doodles and lines and arrows, and tried to make sense of it all. In the green room, Lorleen pressed, Mary Wilson pinned, and Mamas helped pageant players dress, then dashed back to their picnics to watch the spectacle. The game emitted from within. It was organic. Renaissance of the ball-playing tradition. Between innings, the play flourished. House's father, along with hometown friends, shouted encouragement from the sidelines. A gaggle of girls wearing crepe paper dresses danced the glories of Aurora County. From her pine forest to her white clipboard, churches to her sandy dirt roads and old kaput sawmills, the Harmony Cornet Band marched across the outfield and played Waltzing Matilda. Old Johnny Mercer jumped up in a moment of fever to play the spoons, which led several couples to spontaneously square dance. Bowed by the crowd and the attention, the All-Stars played better than they'd ever played. House took them to a 6-1 to one lead. He took his time. He prayed for his arm to hold out. He straightened it and stretched it after every pitch, in just the way that Doc McRae had showed him. Between innings, he plunged it into a cooler of ice water that sat at the end of the All-Stars bench. Then Doc McRae wrapped it and massaged it. At the bottom of the sixth, Doc McRae looked worried. You need a pinch hitter, he said. This arm isn't good. House had struck out every time he had come to the plate. We don't have one, said House. As he pitched the next inning, House's shoulder throbbed. His elbow screamed. His curve was gone. He threw nothing but fastballs, no matter what Ruby signaled. But they didn't look like fastballs anymore. It's okay, House. Just pitch them over, called Ruby. And that's what he did. He got them over, and the Red Bugs hit them. With two outs in the top of the seventh, Jimmy McBrayer slugged a line drive plus Klebo. Gah! Klebo reached for it. It kissed the ground instead. Ned scooped it up, sent it flying to Lincoln at second base, but Lincoln couldn't get it to Wilkie before Jimmy raced across the first base bag. House rolled his shoulder and talked to his arm. Come on, pitcher, come on, pitcher, yelled the All-Star fans. Come on, House, Finesse yelled into the microphone. T.P. Edwards knocked a double in the left field. Boone raced after it and threw it hard to Evan at third, but Jimmy McBrayer was already there. A double to left field, screamed Finesse. The play's at home now. Evan shot the ball back to House. We know that, he shouted to Finesse. House's arm wailed at him to stop, but he wouldn't hear it. Easy does it, called Ruby. House wound up and threw again, but his pitches were wobbling and Rex Brown got to first on balls. Redbug fans were wild. The bases were loaded. The All-Stars chanted like crows in the field. Hang in, House. Attaboy, House. 
one more out, one more out. But the next five red bugs each got a hit off house, and the red bugs brought in another runner on each hit before Jimmy Swan popped out to Evan along the third base line. The side was retired. Thank heavens, shouted Finesse. Seventh inning stretch, hollered Dr. Dan. The score was tied. Six, six.